I have a little PowerPoint, not a PowerPoint. I'm going to try to share with you. Yes, can you see the PowerPoint? I'm talking from, <clears throat> from the town of Mondragon. I'm, I was born in this town. I live in this town and I work in the Mondragon Corporation since 22 years ago. And first of all, I'm going to show you some figures about what we are. We are 96 cooperatives. Cooperatives are in the Basque Country, 96 here in the Basque Country. And then many cooperatives, especially industrial, have subsidiaries around the world, 141 subsidiaries in the world. These companies are not cooperatives. Cooperatives are 96 and are located in the Basque Country. And then we have 23 umbrella companies, foundations and so on. How many people are we working in Mondragon? 81,000 workers. And one of the cooperative is Mondragon headquarters. I'm member, I'm member of the Mondragon headquarters. This is one of the cooperative. Do you know how many people are we working at the headquarters to serve the group, to serve 81,000 people? We are only 60 people. Why only 60 people? Because cooperatives are autonomous. We are a kind of companies that are friends and are together because they want. If there is a cooperative that is not happy in the group, the cooperative can leave the group. But we don't want to happen, but it is possible. 96 cooperatives, most of them are industrial. Machine tools, bicycles, scaffolds, elevators, automotive components, electrical appliances, electronic devices. Some of them are quite big, 2,000 members. There is a credit cooperative in our group. It's in the Basque Country, the second biggest financial entity. There is a consumer cooperative. It's number five in Spain. Agricultural, only three. One is, for example, to produce cows, cows for milk. It's the biggest cows co company of the Basque Country educational, the university, and some schools. One school, the name of the school is Arizmendi, is the biggest in Spain. I have two little children, and they are studying at this school. And what I'm paying for them, the fee that I pay for them, is the fee that any other person pays for its relatives. I'm a member of a cooperative, but it's not cheaper for me. The same price for everybody. Research and development centers. One of them is one of the biggest in the Basque Country, Ikerland. I was working in, in Ikerland before being part of the headquarters. And now you are going to understand that to change from one cooperative to another one is not automatical because cooperatives are autonomous. And there is, there is always a recruitment process. We are autonomous cooperatives. And other kind of cooperatives, service cooperatives, 96. 95 are open to everybody. They are selling their products and services around the world. And one, the name of this cooperative is Lagunaro. Lagunaro is special. Lagunaro is only for us. Lagunaro is our private social security system, complementary to the public system. Lagunaro is about pension. Lagunaro is about health insurance, and it's only for us. But the rest of the cooperatives open to everybody. What is Mondragon? And for that, we are going to go to the history. And the history starts for us in 1941, when the priest Arizmendi Arrieta came from Bilbao to the town of Mondragon. He was 25 years old, and he had mainly four ideas in his mind, four ideas. Dignity of the human person. Arizmendi Arrieta is going to say, God is sacred. We are sons and daughters of God. We are sacred. In the center, in the center of all his activities, the man, the woman. If we are going to do a revolution, are we going to sacrifice a little part of the group for the rest? No, 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 no. No one is going to be sacrificed. We are sacred. Solidarity. At that time, solidarity was very, very present in this group. Today is not so present, but at that time, very, very present. Work. Work in the Basque tradition has been, it is something positive. I say in the Basque tradition because in other parts, for example, of Spain, in Madrid, if I'm an aristocrat, I'm not going to work. 
I'm an aristocrat. Work is not for me. In the Basque country, it doesn't matter the social position. Work is something positive. And Arit Mendiarreta is going to say, work is the way we develop ourselves. I'm working, I'm developing my skills, my competences, and so I become an integral person. He's going to ask why we work, and he's going to answer, we work because we have to improve the society. That's the reason to work. And he's going to ask Arit Mendiarreta, the priest, why we work? We work because God did the world, but the world is not finished. We are going to help God to complete, to finish the world. How? Working. This is work for Arit Mendiarreta. And then we have education. We have to remember that at that time, in the 40s, in the 50s, a little part of the society had money and they had access to university studies and the rest of the people, they had no money, no studies. Education is also fundamental. These ideas in his mind and in his practice. Arin Mendereta was a very practical man. He was an action man. One of the things he's going to learn at the seminar is that we cannot be waiting for the problems to come. The problems are in front of us. What we must do is to identify the problem, to propose solutions, and to implement these solutions. And at that time, we are in the 40s, in the early 40s, Arin Mendereta is going to say, the big problem is that the world is in crisis. The world is a disaster. The First World War, Second World War, the Spanish Civil War, we are going to change the world. When Arizmendiarita says change the world, he means change the region. And if we want to change our region, our society, we usually have two options. One is to change from the top to the bottom, and for that we must be here. And the second option is to change from the bottom up. That was the option of Arizmendi Arrieta. He said, we are going to create a new person. And to create a new person, he had a tool, and the tool was education. But Arizmendi Arrieta had not only one tool, he had two tools to change people, education and work. Because depending how it work, we are going to be one way or we are going to be another way. He's going to use during all his life, these two tools, education and work, to change people and so to transform the society. We are in 1941, two years after the war, after the Spanish Civil War ended, and the society of the town of Mondra was destroyed, not physically. Here, there were relatively few bombs, but socially destroyed. And from the first moment, Arimendi Arrieta is going to meet the young people and he's going to activate them to organize cultural activities, sports activities since 1941. In 1943, he's going to create a school, a vocational level school. There was a vocational level school in the town of Mondagon, but it was private, was, was exclusive, and he created one open to everybody, 1943. This is school today is the University of Mondragon. And after years and years of activism, education, organizing all kinds of activities, sports. He convinced also some of these young people to study not the vocational level uh, studies, but to study engineering. And some of his followers studied engineering. In 1956, 56, he came to the town of Mono in 1941. In 1956, he's going to create a company with five of his followers. Why a company? because Arimendi Arrieta was not happy with the conventional formula of the companies at that time in the town of Mondragon and in the area. The conventional formula was, it is, here are the owners, few people, they have all the power. Here are workers, they have no power and the salaries are very low. No, we must do more human companies. And this is what they did in 1956. They created the company that was called Ulgor. Ulgor, thanks to the family names of the five founders, Usa Torre, La Rañaga, Goroñogoitia, or Machea, or Tubai. What is Ulgor? What are the 96 cooperatives? First of all, me, if I'm member of my cooperative, I work in my cooperative. There are thousands and thousands of cooperatives around the world with a different model. And the different model is well, I'm a member of the cooperative because, for example, I have grape 
and I put grape in the cooper in this cooperative that is going to produce wine. But I'm not working in the cooperative. I'm working in another factory, for example. This is not our case. What we put together in the cooperative is work. That means that I work in my cooperative. How uh, at that time in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, all the workers were members since the first moment. 1973, the petroleum crisis. The crisis came here in the late 70s. We had bad moments. Some of our cooperatives disappeared and we decided to hire workers for a short period. So since the early 80s, we have temporary contract workers. And today in our cooperatives, more or less 80% of the workers are members, 20 workers have a temporary contract. These 80%, they are the owners of the cooperative. Owner of the cooperative is not the government, is not a third part, is not Mondragon. They are the owners of the cooperative. And as owners, they can do whatever they want with the cooperative. They can sell the cooperative. But to sell the cooperative is not in our mind. What is in our mind? What's the mission of Mondragon? What we, what we want to do is to improve the society. And today, there is a realistic, a practice, a possible way to improve the society and is to create jobs, to create good quality jobs. This is what we want to do. And we want to do it now in five years, in 50 years, in 100 years. So member, worker, owner is the same for us. When, well, first of all, I started working in a cooperative since the early 80s with a temporary contract. And before the contract is going to finish, the cooperative is going to say something to me. It's going to say, oh, Ander, we are sorry, there is no work for you, and your contract is going to finish the 31st of December. So the 30, 31st of December, the relation is finished. Or the cooperative can say, Ander, we would like you to, to be a member of our cooperative. In that case, I can say yes, I can say no. If I say no, the relation is finished the 31st of December. If I say yes, I have to put money. How much money? How much money is the initial contribution? In most of our cooperatives, 16,000 euros, one six, 16,000 euros. Industrial cooperatives, agricultural cooperatives, university, 16,000. In the retail sector, salaries are lower. So in the consumer cooperative, it's not 16,000, it's 10,000 euros. And if I don't have this money the first day, the cooperative is going to say, don't worry. You have one year, one year and a half to put the money. So in these conditions and in this region, this amount, on, amount of money is not an obstacle to be member. If instead of being 16,000 or 10,000, it was 40,000, cooperatives will be only for rich people. But 60,000, 10,000 is possible for everyone here in this region. What happens with this money? 20% of this amount of money is a fee. This is for the cooperative, this is for all of us. And 80% of this money is my initial capital. Well, I have a capital, the initial capital. So the first day, this is my initial capital. At the end of the year, we do the accountability. And if we earn money, we hope to earn, to earn money. In the General Assembly, we usually, in each cooperative, we usually decide to share 30% 30% of the net profits between us, between workers. 30% of the net profits for us, for the workers. Workers that have a temporary contract, they get this money cash. And workers that are members, they get this money as capital. That means that the first day that was my capital, at the end of the year, this is my capital. And I can take the capital only when I finish working. For example, when I'm going to retire, but not now. For example, now I cannot ask my co my cooperative, please give me 10,000 of my capital because I'm going to buy a car. Has no sense. Only when, when I'm going to finish, when I'm going to retire. When I'm going to retire, I have two, two options. To take the money. If I take the money, the relation with the cooperative is finished, or I can keep my money in the cooperative. In that case, I'm non-active member and I have some rights. 
one of the right is as the rest of the members to have an interest because of the capital. The interest goes from zero to 7.5%. This is a rule in the monogram group and is decided every year in the general assembly of each cooperative. So this is member worker owner. For example, the cooperative that produce cows to be member of this uh, cows cooperative, I don't have to put 20 cows in the cooperative, but I have to put 16,000 euros and work. And once I finish working in this cows cooperative, I don't take 80 cows, but I take the capital I have in the cooperative. If you ask, it doesn't matter what, what member, and it doesn't matter what cooperative. Sorry, is this your mobile phone? The answer of the member is, yes, of course, this is my iPhone or this is my Samsung or this is my, my smartphone. But if you ask, sorry, are you the proprietor of your cooperative? The answer is yes. <laughs> the smartphone, of course, this is mine. And your cooperative, the answer is yes. Why? Because with the smartphone, you can do whatever you want, but not with the cooperative. Another main characteristic is that one member, one vote. It doesn't matter if I'm member since two years ago or since 30 years ago. It doesn't matter if I'm the boss of the department or not, one vote. And it doesn't matter if I, if I have 20,000 euros of capital or 200,000 euros of capital, one vote. We vote in the General Assembly and the General Assembly is once per year or at least once per year. In the General Assembly, we take the most important decisions and we vote there. We don't vote the daily decisions. Daily decisions are taken by supervisors, directors, the main decisions, all of us, but the daily decisions, supervisors and directors. And I have the right to vote and I have the right to be elected, for example, to be the president of the cooperative and to be part of the governing council. And the third main co uh, characteristic, what happens with money? Okay, the year is finished. We have profits. We hope to have profits, net profits, 30% for us. 10% is for the society. This is low. This is the Basque cooperative law. 10% is for the society. What is the society? The sports clubs, cultural clubs, non-governmental organizations of the region, 10%. And so 60% reserved. It's very important to save money than to invest in new businesses, for example. Now, the question is how we share this 30% of the profits between workers. Because if we were the cooperative that produce, uh, that elaborate wine, in that case, if I'm a member, depending the quantity and quality of grape that I put in the cooperative, I'm going to get more or less profits. But in our case, what we put together in the cooperative is not grape, it's work. So how we do it? We have to remember Arizmendi Arrieta. What is work? Work is the way we develop ourselves. We are working to improve the society. And Arizmendi Arrieta said, we are working to help God to complete the world. So for Arizmendi Arrieta, all the jobs are, are similar. They have the same dignity and they have to have the same salary. That was Arizmendi Arrieta. But Arizmendi Arrieta was very intelligent and he continued the sentence. He said, but if we pay the same, is not going to work. Here is not going to work. Maybe in England, yes, but not here. So we are going to establish a difference between salaries. But what difference? And they ask a question. The question was, if the job that contributes less to the company is going to earn one, the CEO could have a good living earning three times? The answer was yes. Okay. The difference between the lowest payment and the highest payment one to three. This was in the past. In the past, solidarity was very, very present. Today is just present. Today, the difference is not one to six, one to three, but it's one to six. If we compare us with some of our competitors, for example, the companies of the Spanish stock exchange market, the IBEX index, not NASDAQ or not Nikkei, but IBEX index, in that case, the difference between salaries is one to 79. In our case, it's one to six. If we take into account 
these ideas of what is a cooperative of Mondragon, and if we take into account that many cooperatives are located in this region, this region is Alto Deva, the town of Mondragon, the town of Vergara, the town of Arechavaleta. We are going to understand that this region is usually the region in Spain with the lowest ratio of unemployment. This region is usually the region in Spain that invests most in research and development because we want to continue existing. And this region is usually the region in Spain with the lowest economical inequality. If we measure economical inequality with the Gini index, one of the lowest in the world. The top countries are Sweden and Norvegia. We are close to these countries. Well, this is the main message that I, I wanted to share with you. Now, I think that we have some minutes and I can answer your questions. That's great, Ander. Thank you I can very much. I can two hours, two hours more, but I prefer to answer <laughs> your questions. Uh, that's been a really fascinating overview. And I think um, one of the things that struck me yesterday, we, we heard from um, speakers from, based in Switzerland and the USA, and to hear you as well from the Basque country, that sort of diversity of business practice elsewhere in the world has been a really, um, uh, just, just so great to hear. As, as we said yesterday, at the moment, everyone is so isolated, but also the nuance of it, the sort of the, just how very different the model you describe is from most of the business news that we hear and most of the business models we ever uh, uh, that are ever covered in in the news flashes that we hear in the news coverage it's, it's really interesting any brief questions for under esther has hi thank you anders and uh, under uh, two, two things really just from the last thing that you said about your statistics and compared to spain and well, in Europe. But I just wondered, as a result of the um, low unemployment, do you also have low crime rates and do you have higher um, literacy, educational achievement in your area? That's a good question. That's a good question because I don't know the answer. Uh, there are no studies about that. I would like to do this in, in the corporation, but uh, it's not a priority. <laughs> Not a priority. I think so, yes. I live here. The, the, the crime ratio is very low and uh, the, the quality of life is very high, yes. But I think that is, uh, it would be very interesting to do a, a big study about that. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one is Keith. Right, wait. Um, thank you, Alice. That was. Uh, that was uh, um, very interesting. Um, is is Mondragon or the component parts of Mondragon? Are they? Is it a business? We yes, we are we are businesses. You are yes. Thank you. Uh, Ninety six cooperatives. Most of them are well. We all of us we are businesses. Uh, few of them are non profit. The university. Um, educational cooperatives and technological research centers are not uh, for profit. And the rest are, in that sense, conventional companies. Cooperatives, Thank you. but we have profits. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Gordon Ferguson. Yeah, thank you for that. That was fantastic. Um, the thing that really jumped out for me was first school was a vocational school. You now call it a university, uh, but in the fact of this emphasis that we have on the so-called knowledge economy, how much emphasis do you still place on vocational education? Uh, if I have understood your question, for us, it's very, very important education. We are working in many fields that are uh, very challenging in the, in the world. We must be competitive. So we need the best people, the best workers. Some of our workers are not the best one, so we need to train them. The thing is that once 
I, I'm a member of Mondragon. Once any worker uh, from the period of being a temporary contact worker passed to be a member, this person is going to be uh, being part of Mondragon 40 years because we don't fire people. We don't fire people except this person hit someone, yes? But we don't fire people for economical reasons. So employability is very, very important. And so we use our university. Our university also have a part of vocational level. And it's, this is very important for the survival of our cooperatives. Uh, thank you, yeah. Okay. And now, Lorna. Uh, that was astonishing. Thank you. Um, I, I, you talked about the um, eighty percent. Say you could have eighty percent of members owners, and um, twenty percent of temporary contract workers. Um, forgive me if I missed it, but is there any um, regulation within each cooperative about that proportion? I mean, could you have? 80% temporary contract workers who may or may not then become owner members and 20% owner members. Is there any kind of limit or regulation or, or direction on that? Yes, and the regulation is the law. So it's not an internal regulation. It's not about the bylaws of the cooperative, but it's the cooperative law. Uh, the, the cooperative law is the Basque cooperative law. And since the last change in the law in December last year, the limit is 75% um, members, 25 temporary contract workers. This is right. the limit. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then the next question I've got is three days. And uh, thank you very much for coming along. This is really brilliant and really, really interesting. I was wondering what happens, you said, you, you said, cooperatives don't fire people but what happens if profit in a year where profits are low or maybe it hasn't happened yet but um, but what happened to the what happens in those cooperatives where maybe I don't know under under current uh, pandemic circumstances where there is very little profit or next to none how do they survive without without making anyone redundant yes so by one hand, every cooperative pays an amount of money to the group. Yes, part of the profits every year goes to the group. So we have funds. Mm -hmm. We have funds to help cooperatives that are losing money by one hand. And by the other hand, we have what we call relocation. If I'm a member of a cooperative and one day there is no work for me, I have the right to work in another cooperative of Mondragon. If there is no work for me in any cooperative in Mondragon, I have the right to be trained, to be trained, to, to be more employable. And if still there is no work for me in any cooperative of Mondragon, I have the right to get an unemployment benefit for two years. No one person in our history has extinguished this two years period of unemployment. Okay. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> This is what we are doing now in this pandemic uh, period. And so far it's worked. Yes. <laughs> okay, I hope it carries on working. Thank you. Okay, and then the next question I've got is Joanna. Thank you, Ander. That was um, really good. Um, do you have any apprenticeship schemes as associated with your cooperative? Apprenticeship scheme. Yeah. Sorry, what, what, what do you mean? Training um, of younger people to become part of the cooperative. Ah, no. <laughs> we we trained our people, but this is uh, something peculiar. We train our people in cooperative values once they are members. Mm -hmm. So okay. when they are part of the cooperative as a temporary contact worker, they have no training. They have technical training, but once they are accepted as, as member, they have a course. Yeah, so the technical training is already there. That's my yeah, yeah. question. You don't, you, they're, they're already formed as a, as a skilled person. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. This is uh, very important. 
yes. they, they must be very good workers during all their period in the cooperative. This is the technical uh, training. But then the cooperative training is once they are part of the cooperative as member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's such a great, it's such a great model that um, for me, it would be great for you to be training younger people and to be technical and, and give them the ethics at the same time. <laughs> so that everything is uh, yes. even, uh, uh, um, grassroots, we say. In some way, the Mondragon University is doing this in some way. Yeah. In some way. Thank you. Okay, and then we've got time for, well, we're actually a little bit over time, but I'm going to do the last question. That's Robert. Well, thank you for your excellent presentation, Anders. It's really good to hear that. Thank you very yeah, well. much. And in many ways, there are some connections with our cooperative movement in the UK, but it is a different model. I wanted to ask you a simple question about underperformance. I know that, that you know, you have a sort of social responsibility for people. And, you know, you talk about people having work for life if they want it. But what happens if you have colleagues who are not very good at their work? How do you deal with underperformance? In that case, we have a problem. No, but there is no uh, magical formula. So what we do is to give this person more training to change the job of this person it can be to change the job inside the cooperative or maybe to change to another cooperative or maybe is to reduce uh, the salary no magical formula it depends on the person yes or we can invite this person to to retire earlier and we can give money this person to retire earlier yeah yes. thank you very much yeah